Hello again. Uh, today we are going to stumble our way through learning more about widgets. Uh, a few things that I haven't shown you yet uh, are going to be in this video. Uh, we're going to be starting out from scratch and piecing together a few things to make a very simple app that doesn't do too much, but at least we'll show you a few more Flutter features that we haven't yet demonstrated. So uh, just like every other exercise, we just start off by clearing out anything from the base code that we don't need. Uh, in fact, I'm actually going to clear this out maybe more extensively. Um, because basically everything's starting from here going downward. Uh, we just like, don't need any of this. So I think what we're going to do is we're actually just going to delete all of it. Um, and now here the, um, the home widget for my material app, I think is actually just going to be another class I would make. We're going to call it, um, my widgets page. Uh, do I need a parameter for this? Uh, sure. A title probably would be good. So title more widgets. Why not? Let's go make a file for making a more widgets page more widgets uh sorry we should call it a more widgets page not a my widgets page and there'll be a good class here that's going to be a um a i think it's a stateless no state full widget yes state full widget state full widget more widgets page kaboom uh, we need to grab material uh, and over here, we need to import uh, so everything builds okay. Uh, right now, title's not being used, so I probably want to uh, declare that somewhere. I believe we're going to declare it in here. Uh, title. Uh, why is this angry? Uh, all final variables must be initialized, but title isn't. So. Oh, really? Okay. Um, oh, right. Um, because so right now it's only, um, it's only looking for a key, but we actually want to potentially put in a title. So do this dot title, uh, and we'll make this optional. Okay. There we go. So now it's looking for a title and we'll pass that to this variable. A okay. Uh, let me build this to make sure I didn't break anything. Go. Nothing should show up. Uh, okay, actually nothing showed up. Um, that's probably, uh, I guess that's probably fine, right? Because it should just be a blank container. Because um, I, I need to put in a, um, a a scaffold and everything like that. So you know, scaffold, uh, and inside my scaffold, I'm going to have an app bar. It's just going to be an app bar. Maybe I should have copied this from the starter code. Uh, it's not a big deal. Let me just make sure it doesn't give me a, another black screen because I feel like it's you know, really unsettling to me at the very least. Uh, over here, our app bar is going to have a title, which is going to be the um, the title of our widget. Um, for sure. No, is that not what we're looking for? Um, oh, right, text. Duh. <laughs> My brain's like clearly out of it. Um, don't mind me. We'll we'll get through this together. Uh, yes, guaranteed. There we go. Okay. Um, so in my, so scaffold gives me the white screen instead of a black screen. Uh, app bar allows me to put the blue thing at the top. I want to put some text in there, specifically the title that comes from my main page, this title here. Uh, sure. Make it a constant for fun. Um, so this title gets passed over to here. And now since the state of the stateful widget extends um, state, when I use widget.title, it basically says, okay, um, based on where we are right now in the code, look up through our parents to see where's the first place that there's actually a, um, a title that I can reference. And in this case, it's this title. Uh, so the title here comes directly from here. Uh, I need to use widget.title in order to do so. And I need the exclamation mark because it's not guaranteed that I'm going to get a title when I declare um, my page. So this should fix it. Hooray, more widgets. Uh, we can keep going on from there. So what uh, else should we put in here? Um, 
I suppose what we can do is we can put some stuff in our app bar. Uh, before we had a few um, tab buttons, tab, uh, we had that tab controller from a few exercises ago that let us switch between different views. How about we put some icons in our app bar uh, that do some stuff. So uh, in here, we're gonna have a list of actions. Each action should be a, um, a widget that's typically going to be an icon button. So it's a little picture of something and when you press it, something happens. Uh, so we're gonna have a list of icon buttons. Uh, for example, icon button. Uh, and we're gonna have it do something when pressed, some function. And we're gonna have it have an icon. Uh, let's make a little shopping thing. So we're gonna do uh, icon icons dot add shopping cart. Ooh, and this is going to um, our little function here is going to add stuff to a cart. Uh, I don't think we're actually gonna implement all of that, um, but just for the sake of you know making sure we can actually press a button, uh, we'll make our code look a little nicer. Uh, we don't need a parameter for this because it's a button. There's no values going into it. We're just going to print out, um, you know, uh, add to cart. Sure, why not? Uh, and this can be a constant as well, I suppose. Look, a shopping cart. And I can click on it. I'll click on it, add to cart. So you can have a nice little interface here of buttons. Uh, let's add some more. Why not? Um, so, the, uh, within the list, uh, we'll make another one just like it. Uh, you know, uh, remove from cart, and this one will be um, uh, the remove shopping cart. Note that lines it up from left to right. So now I can add to cart, remove from cart, so on and so forth. Um, let's uh, let's add another kind of button. Uh, so these have been icon buttons so far. How about we do a pop up menu button? Um, so a little pop up menu button. Let's uh, I guess we'll we'll implement it, but this is going to show us a little pop up menu when we click on it. So let's try doing that. Um, I'm going to need to give this a function. Uh, the function needs to take the context that is like where we're working in the, um, the current widget tree. Uh, and in here, oops, this should be tabbed like that. Uh, am I missing a parentheses? No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, and here we're going to need to return some pop-up menu items. So pop-up, what is it? Uh, pop-up menu item. Uh, and each of these can have a child, which can be some text. Uh, we'll leave it blank for now. It's fine, I think. Um, and this is looking for a list of these things. So I suppose. I can, can I two list a single thing? Probably not, huh? Okay, well, um, I'm probably going to want to take uh, some stuff and make it into a list of things. So we're gonna use, um, uh, let's say that I want a list of strings. This is gonna look kind of like what we had before with the, um, with the different countries, uh, where I had them all as a list of strings. So in here we'll have, um, you know, um, what is it? Uh, let's say menu items. Well, let's say you know um, new open save. Uh, why are you mad? Let me call it. Give it a variable. Sure. Uh, it's a list of strings. I guess if we want to be really precise about it. Uh, and we're going to um, we're going to take each of these and make it into a list of stuff. I guess this might get away with letting us. Um, yeah, so I think we want to make a list of widgets, and each widget is going to be the text of each of these words. So we're going to take the menu items. We're going to map each thing in there um, to uh, a text widget that contains 
Z value. Uh, why are you angry now? Uh, to list. Um, a pop-up menu entry as required by the con. Uh, hold up. So this is a list of text, but it wants a list of pop-up menu entries. Okay, well, what happens if I try pop-up menu entry? Pop-up menu entry um, is an abstract class, but I need to have something that is a pop-up menu entry, um, which I assume text would qualify, but maybe not. Um, so my button oh no, this should be um this should be um pop up menu items that's what i'm looking for pop up pop up menu items and each pop up menu item uh is going to have a child uh and each of those children is going to be the text text containing the thing there we go. Uh, I'll clean this line up, but right now I just want to kind of make sure it works, and then after it works, I can like polish this code and make it look a little less ugly. Variable names like e probably should not show up in your code. Um, so now this gives me the um, you know the little triple dots here. When I click on it, hey look, I can do new, I can do open, I can do save. Um, right now, nothing happens when I click on them, and I'll change that in a bit. But right now, I want to polish up this code so it looks a little less ugly. Uh, so right now. Um, I have my list of menu options. Um, each one of those needs to generate a pop-up menu item. Uh, so each of those is going to be, you know, a value of some sort. Uh, and it's going to map to pop-up menu items. And each pop-up menu item uh, is going to have, oops, let's do that is going to have a child inside, which is going to be text, and the text is going to be the value from here. So this will create a pop-up menu item, this will create a pop-up menu item, this will create a pop-up menu item. Um, we also probably need to fix, I think, what we did last time with the list of countries, and that the value associated with each pop-up menu item should be something I can reference directly, so in this case, the string. Um, this way, when I actually click on them, I can take the string whether it's new, open, or save, and then do something with it elsewhere, particularly in the, um, the parameter of pop-up menu button called on selected. When you select something, probably stuff should happen. So let me uh, do that. Uh, where is this brace closing? This brace closes here, so I can tab all this like that. Um, okay, so that's... This is my item builder, uh, comma. Then I want my um, my unselected. So when you click on one of these options, do a thing based on which one you click. So uh, when you click on them, you have a value that you clicked on, and then uh, let's just you know print out what we selected. So we selected um, pop up menu option value just so we can see that we actually printed it out. So, run. Okay, excuse me, errors, I don't know why. Um, over here, when I click on new, all right, I selected pop-up menu option new. When I click on open, the pop-up menu option open. And then you can, if you want these to actually like do things, you can take the value and then say something like, you know, if they pick new, do all this stuff. If they pick open, do all this stuff, and so on and so forth. Um, something that you might want to consider doing is, in particular, most of the time when you select one of these sorts of items, unless it's something that modifies directly um, an object appearing on the page that you're at, you probably want your um, to open a new page to do something. And I think we're going to go over that next exercise. Um, but just for reference, this might be the kind of place where you do something like um, using navigate uh, or navigation dot of dot push um, to go to a new page. 
Uh, and so this is something you could consider doing here. You could do it for, um, for when you click on like remove from cart, when you click on add to cart uh, over here. Um, this is stuff I think that maybe I'll leave out for now just for the sake of time, but um, very often, the, the, sort of the expectation when someone is using one of these apps is if you click on a button like this one, the you know add something to a cart, um, it probably should um, it probably should open a new page where, for instance, I go to like click on items that are there or something like that. Uh, lost connection to device is probably not the thing I want to see right now when I'm running an exercise. Um, let me run this again. Oh, I guess I have to rebuild the thing. That's kind of annoying. Um, but in the um, in the case of like app bar icons, app bar icon buttons, pop up menu uh, buttons, sometimes you'll click on them and it should be something that modifies the page that you're currently on. Maybe you know you press like a trash can button and it should just delete the thing that you've highlighted, for example. Um, but um, other times you'll want to click on a button and open a new new a whole new thing, a whole new scaffold, a whole new app bar all of that stuff. Uh, and next exercise, not this one, is I think when we're going to go over exactly how to implement that. Um, but if you want to you know, jump ahead a little bit, you can always try to look into how to use Navigate. I think it's either Navigate or Navigation. Navigate. Is Navigator. Of? Yeah, I think it's Navigator. It's Navigator. Well, uh, we'll correct all of our, um, our <laughs> syntax for this at that point. But uh, in any case, you know, all this stuff should do what we want. Click, click, click. All is good. Okay. Uh, let us move onward. So um, right now I don't have a body for my uh, scaffold and that's kind of sad. So let's actually put something in here. Body. Uh, no, well, uh, it's for, uh, should be for the scaffold, right? Oh, I'm in the wrong place in my code. There we go. Body. Okay, let us make, um, I guess we don't really need a body. Just center. It's not really necessary, I don't think. I probably could even leave it out. Um, but I'll put it in just for fun. Maybe some weird stuff might happen if I don't do this. So how about I leave it out for now and then later if I need to add this code, I can. But I don't think it's actually necessary. What I do want to do is add a few other uh, widgets that I haven't been using. So um, we've already seen floating action icon or floating action button. Um, let's just add one in again just for funsies. Uh, floating action buttons. Um, uh, why is this mad? Probably because it needs stuff. Yeah, it needs stuff. Okay, um, you know, on pressed uh, is takes any function you want, and when you click it, it will do stuff. Notably, because it's just a button that has a little symbol on it, um, it um, you can't actually pass any parameters, uh, which means that if you do need to consider a certain value or something like that when you press the button, you probably need to be able to refer to, for instance, like widget dot title or something like that if the values that affect the function are relevant for when you click on it. Um, for us, I think we're just gonna have our button not really do anything. Um, at least we can print something for fun. Uh, you press the button. Fun. Um, you know, you can have a tool tip. I, I haven't found that the tool tip actually, I think this is, um, yeah, this text is displayed when the user long presses on the button is used for accessibility. So I guess for that purposes, you know, uh, print a message. Uh, let's see if I can actually get this to show up. And then uh, let's make sure that there is an actual thing that shows up on the, the flowing action button. Um, we'll go with an icon, icons dot um, more vert. Sure. This can be constant, it's not gonna change. Hmm. Hey, look, a little button, and I can click on it, and it will say you press the button. If I click and hold, hey, look, it says print a message. Look at that. So uh, in case that is something that you want to appear, you can set those things as you like. OK, uh, so that was um, that was floating action button. Uh, you can also have a bottom navigation bar um, if you want to be able to use that for stuff. Now, I think this is another one where you need to have like a specific type of widget, um, which I believe is like bottom navigation bar items or something like that. Uh, yeah, so 
for this, we're, I think, once again, going to need a bottom, yeah, bottom navigation bar. Uh, kind of unsurprisingly, this is looking for a um, list of items, and each of those items needs to be a uh, bottom navigation bar item uh, with an icon. So we can do, um, uh, let's say, um, hmm, what do I want to do for this? I think what I want to do for this one is um, let's say that we wanted to set up the ability to switch to different pages. I don't think we're going to get to the point where we actually can do that. Maybe I, maybe I will. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll be able to figure it out, and if so, I can do so. But um, for now, let's say that we want to, um, we just want to reference the, um, uh, like a couple of different options. So we need to have icons for this. I think maybe for now, let's keep it simple and then we can expand on stuff after. So let's take icon and we're just going to make a simple, um, I don't know, AC unit. Why not? I have no idea what this even looks like. It should be fun. Uh, icon that contains this. Um, so this will just have one item in it, um, which is not, I think, what I'm looking for. Uh, um, bottom nav, oh, this should be correct, yeah? What am I seeing a brace for? Oh, um, really? Wait, expected to find this, but this should work, I think, right? Uh, the list of items is a list. Here's the list. Uh, did I miss parentheses? I don't think so. Oh no, I don't need a semicolon because this isn't a line of code. It's just a um, it's just a thing. So let's try this out just to see what happens. I'm sort of curious. We're missing a lot of the functionality we're going to have later. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> bottom navigation bars can't show up if you have fewer than two items. So we're going to need a couple. Let's do that. Uh, second icon can be uh, add circle. Who knows what these look like? We're going to find out together, aren't we? Uh, okay, now what? Each item must have a non-null label. And right now they have no labels. So that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, so let's give them some labels. Um, so this one, oop, label. Uh, I think I can give this um, just straight text. Uh, so, you know, the C unit. This is the, uh, the add circle one. Add circle. And it's very giving me all these underlines because these are constants. I think. Is that why the problem is here? Prefer constant literals as parameters of construct. Oh, so literally everything here is, is like constants for days. Sure. Um, it's very angry at me in terms of all these constants. No, I can't put constant there. That's not necessary. It's still really mad at me, huh? Where's it looking for it? Oh, I see. The list should be constant. I guess that makes sense. Instead of declaring each item in my list as constant, I can just say the whole list is constant. Kind of makes sense. Run. Go. Hey, look at that. I have a uh, bottom navigation bar. And when I click on them, uh, nothing happens yet because right now nothing actually happens. Um, but we can have it actually do stuff uh, if we add some more implementation details. So uh, let us do that. Now, first off, this is kind of hideous, right? Like you don't, you don't really generally want to, um, to build an individual item per thing that's gonna appear in your bar. Uh, it's much better to do what we've been doing, which is to use the map function to take a list of things and then from those generate the navigation bar items that you're gonna be using. So to do that, I believe that what we're going to do is we're going to, um, where is it? I think we're going to build like a very, very simple class. Uh, we're going to call it nav page. Uh, and the idea here is if we were like eventually getting to the point where we're going to navigate from page to page, 
which I don't think we'll be able to do in this exercise, but we'll, we'll see. Maybe depending on how much time I have, I can do it. Um, we're going to have a bunch of pages that we can jump between. And each one's going to have a title and uh, an icon. I don't think it needs to be icon data, but maybe it does. Um, and a constructor. Nothing too complicated. This dot title, this dot icon. Boom, done. Uh, so here's my little class. And then in my more widgets, I'm going to make um, probably up, I think, over here uh, is we're going to have a list of those. List of nav pages. Pages. Uh, and it's going to be um, a list. And here is where I can build each of those pages. And I can say it's going to be a nav page. I probably should import this so it stops giving me errors. Thank you. Um, we're going to have a title. Uh, let's say that's, um, I guess for now we got, um, you know, AC unit. <laughs> uh, and uh, the icon is, um, what is it? Uh, Icons.addCircle. Or no, sorry, uh, icons.ac unit. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll do the other one. And we'll do, let's do a couple. Um, okay, maybe I should use some less silly ones than AC unit, huh? Uh, let's let's do some real things. Um, so add to cart, uh, save lists, checklists. My my reference for this is uh, is like actually useful um, <laughs> functions as opposed to like silly randomness that I'm pulling directly from lists. So maybe we'll maybe we'll stick to using you know real things. Uh, card membership, sure, why not? Uh, okay, so now I have a list of nav pages, uh, and each of these has a title and an icon, and I can use those to build bottom navigation bar items. So instead of having this list here, which I don't need, I can instead take the pages and I can map uh, each one of them to a bottom navigation bar item. Uh, and in each of them, I'm going to have, uh, so this is going to be the, um, the page. And then for each page, I'm going to have page.icon, uh, and the label is going to be um, page.title. Uh, this can still give me errors, probably because this is all needs to go into a list. Uh, I don't need a semicolon, I don't think. Why are you mad? Uh, icon data being, um, oh, so this is um, an icon that contains this data. There we go. Okay, this uh, you're probably missing a lot of the code. So let me space it out, and then we can talk about what the heck I just did. Because it looks kind of wild, but it's going to make our code a lot cleaner at the end of the day, and is a lot better if we decide that we want to put in like a, a ton of things in the uh, navigation bar. So the code that I just wrote, bottom navigation bar of the, um, and this belongs to the um, the scaffold, which is like the you know the whole um, overall page of the app we're looking at here. Um, is the thing you can see down here, right? I haven't rebuilt it yet, so it's going to appear differently when I do, but each item in this bottom bar here is a bottom navigation bar item. To construct one of them, I need to give it a name, a title, uh, which is its label, and then a little icon, which is, you know, uh, from the um, icon constructor. The parameter for the icon constructor is icon data. It's specifically the reference to whatever image I actually want to have appear in here. Um, and in order to create all of these bottom navigation bar items, what I'm doing is I'm taking my list of nav pages over here. There's a list of three nav pages I've constructed, um, each with different things. And it's gonna take each of these objects, grab its title and make the title the label. And it's going to grab the icon information, which icon to use, and use that to construct an icon to show over here. Um, the map, function uh, from this list takes each element uh, and then constructs the bottom navigation or item for each one. However, when it does this, what you end up with is an iterable. Um, it's sort of like a list, but not quite. 
Uh, so since it is not a list, I need to take it and convert it to a list at the end so that this can actually be passed to the parameter of bottom navigation bar uh, of which items is looking for an actual list of items. So when I do all this, and compile and run, I'm going to add to cart, I'm going to save list, I got my checklists. Now, when I click on them, nothing happens. That's kind of annoying. Uh, let's see if I can get at least something to happen when I click on these things. So um, in my bottom navigation bar, right now I have items. And I want to have something that uh, is on tap. So on tap here um, is called any time that I tap an item. Uh, and notably, we're going to keep track of the index of the item in which I tapped. So for instance, um, when I tap on the first one, that's going to be index zero and so on and so forth. So on tap is going to um, need a function and the function is going to have a parameter, which is going to be the index. Uh, and so um, let's say that I want to, um, do I want to do anything with this? Maybe we'll just print it. Um, so you know, print. Switching to page index, sure. Um, just to you know, see what this will actually do when I try clicking on stuff. So now when I click on here, switching to page zero, page one, page two. Um, notably, also the um, the thing that's been highlighted here stays as the blue one. I think there's a way to change that. Let's see if we can piece it together. I don't have it in my sample code, so. Um, now, if I had to guess, I would say that it's um, current index is zero. So that's the default. So what I think we can do is actually take current index and change it to the index. Does that work? Perhaps not. Um, bottom navigation bar. Can I do widget dot current index? Is that valid? Maybe not. Not defined. Okay, Maybe that's not what I'm looking for. Um, I know there's a way to do this. I'm just trying to think about how it might be. Um, hmm. Yeah, my list of items. I have a function for when I tap it. I have my current index, and that's what I want to change. But right now I can't seem to access the current index from when I click on it. Or at least when I click on it, it doesn't actually change it. Um, let's see here. Uh, does this information tell me anything? Must be at least two items. Label can't be null. Uh, things that can't be null. Uh, maybe I'll let's let's see if a, a quick Google will tell me. Um, bottom navigation bar item change index. Yeah, yeah. How do I do that? Uh, ah, I see. Okay, so there's a little there's a little trick to it. Um, which is that, and I guess it's a very obvious one. I'm, yeah, it's sort of embarrassing to miss it, actually. Um, see, really, the current index has changed. <laughs> uh, it just doesn't show up. The reason it doesn't show up is because to show all this stuff again, um, I need to actually rebuild this widget. And to rebuild this widget, when I've made a change to my data, in this case, the index, I actually need to call a function, and that function is called set state. So inside of here, I'm actually going to call set state. Uh, and I can actually do this really quickly rather than writing out more function stuff, just context actions surround with set state. Boom. Now, let's look. Page zero. Okay, I thought this would do it, but I was, I was fooled. It's bamboozled, bamboozled I say. Um, perhaps what I can do is I can set a variable, perhaps, to this index. Yeah, so you know what we're going to do is we're going to go over 
here. Uh, where am I gonna put it? Uh, here. We're gonna have um, selected index equals zero by default. And over here in my bottom navigation bar, I'm gonna set the current index to be the selected index. There we go. So now what this should do, if I did this correctly, is when I need to rebuild this widget because I've clicked on something, I'm going to set the current index to actually be whichever one was selected. And whichever one was selected is actually just gonna be the one in here. Selected index is this index. So that way when I click on something, I change the one that I'm currently tracking and the one I'm tracking will rebuild, uh, will make it so that when I rebuild this bottom navigation bar, which happens because of set state, um, then it will change the color of what I've selected. So let's, let's get that going. Okay, click. Ha ha ha, now it feels good, okay. All right, so yeah, um, gotta have all of those things there. Um, if you don't have any, if you're missing any one of them, then when you click on them, obviously nothing's gonna change, but you need to be able to set the current index to what you've selected, change what you've selected based on on tap, use set state to rebuild everything so this actually shows up. This actually sounds like a lot of steps really for uh, what should, I think in like theory be something really simple, but there are a lot of things that it's very easy to overlook sometimes. So uh, good to keep track of that kind of thing. Now, let's, um, Let's see, is there anything else I want to add here? I do think I want to add one more thing, and maybe that's, that'll be the last thing that we do. Um, maybe I can, uh, I don't think I'll have the, I think I want to save the Navigator stuff for next time, because it's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that you might have to do for Navigator. Um, but, um, and, and then here also might be a place that, you know, you use Navigator to, to go to a new page. Uh, To-dos for the future, I suppose. Um, one more thing I want to add is a drawer. Uh, and we're going to um, create a drawer. Uh, and we're going to call a function for that from another file that we're going to write. Um, but drawer is like the thing you pull from the side of the screen, right? Um, so let's make one last file for today called create drawer. Uh, and I think this is just going to be a function. I'm not gonna need a class for this one. Um, it's just gonna be the function uh, that returns a widget. Uh, it's called create drawer. No parameters are needed. And we're, here we're going to return a drawer. Uh, now off the bat, this is empty. So I think if I do this, make sure to import. Um, nothing interesting should happen particularly. Um, all my stuff should be non-broken though. Uh, I think I can pull it. Yeah, so I can pull the drawer. So here's my little drawer from the side. Um, there's nothing in it. So maybe I wanna, I wanna fill it up with some stuff. Let's do that. In my drawer, let's put some things. Uh, so first off, um, what are the parameters of drawer? So we can take a look. Uh, not too much actually. The color, the elevation, width, uh, label, um, but child is the most important one because child is going to be things that actually show up in the drawer. And in here we're gonna make a container. In our container, we're gonna make some more stuff. Um, so in our container, let's start off by having a child. Uh, and in our drawer, let's have a, um, a list view. We have a list of stuff in our drawer. Uh, okay, so it looks like we're gonna have to put some stuff in here to make this work. Um, this all should end in a comma, which it does. Okay, so I'm going to need to to build this list. This is gonna have stuff in it, it's gonna have separators, and it's going to have a number of items. Okay, uh, let's make like, I don't know, uh, let's say eight items. Sure, why not? Um, eight items. Uh, separator builder. Uh, is a function which takes a context and an index, uh, and we're just going to return a divider. Just gonna split them up with simple lines, nothing too complicated there. Uh, the item builder here uh, is again gonna be a function, takes a context and an index, uh, and it's going to need to give us some items in our list. So we're going to return a, um, 
going to return a container. Uh, and in our container, uh, I think we're gonna keep it really simple. I'm gonna keep, um, I'll, I'll add maybe some more like flair to this, but for now, I think I don't wanna code too much without being able to see what's happening. Uh, so for this, let's make a child. That's just some text. Um, and the text here is index, index. And then we're going to, once we see what this looks like, we can start to like modify it and uh, craft this into what we really want. So run, I say. Uh, so, hey, look at that. I got some stuff on the side and a bunch of little boxes with text in them. Okay, not too impressive just yet. Uh, so, okay, first off, this is all shoved like way too close to the side for my comfort. So let's push everything a little bit uh, across. So padding. Um, let's do some edge insets. Edge insets. Okay, cool. Not tween. I just want edge insets dot. Uh, let's try symmetric vertical 50 for fun. And this is a constant. Let's see where this uh, pushes things. Uh, I guess that pushes it down. So let's do um, in all directions. Oops, sorry. Uh, Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. Things are a little nicer that way. Um, I can adjust this also if I really feel like it. But anyway, uh, okay, so right now it builds eight things because I said to build eight things, and it builds each one of them using an index, so item zero to seven. Um, and right now it's just text, so let's make this a little spicier, huh? Uh, right now, all of our things are kind of thin. Let's all give them a height. Let's say 50. And space them out a little bit. How does that do it? Okay, it's a little, a little nicer. Um, let's give them some color. Blue. Um, 100 plus, I'm oh, sorry, uh, we need to reference 100 plus uh, index times 100. So I believe that blue contains just enough to get us um, 100, 200, 300, 400, uh, 500, 600, 700. So we should have enough shades for this. Oh, very nice. All looking a little different now. You can see the dividers more clearly as well that are separating each of the boxes that are in here. Um, and let's make it so that these actually do something because right now they're just boxes. They're not actually clickable or anything like that. And your kind of expectation is when you pull it a drawer to be able to click on some of the stuff at least. Uh, so let's do that. Um, right now they are text. Uh, let's make instead them be wrapped in a widget. Uh, and we're just going to be called um, a flat button. Oh, it's deprecated. What's the new version? Um, oh, it doesn't tell me until I do on pressed. Okay, that's fine. Maybe it's not deprecated and it's lying to me. We'll find out. Um, on pressed. Uh, we'll do nothing for now. Okay, no, it is deprecated. What should I be using? Uh, use text button instead. All right, text button. Oh, okay. Um, when it is pressed, we're gonna print you pressed button index exclamation mark. Also, just so we see something happens. Pull it back again. Oh, look at that. They're uh, oh, this is kind of ugly. We should change the uh, font color, shouldn't we? But when I click on them, press button zero, button three. But seven, nice, we got them you know, doing stuff. Um, let us change the text color here because that's looking real hideous. Um, I think you do that with the style perhaps. Style, text style. Um, color, color dot, uh, orange shows up pretty well. Or, Sorry, colors dot orange constant. 
Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, there we go. Uh, that doesn't look that good either. I think it's just a case of like having certain um, um, shades on other ones. Normally, orange shows up like usually fairly well on these. I think maybe we'll just stick to black. That might actually show up better. It could also just be the case that this is not a good place to put text, but you know. Okay, this is actually a little better, surprisingly. So there we go. You can see all the buttons. You can click on them nicely. Um, anything else that we want to do? Um, <laughs> I think I'm kind of happy with this. This video has been going on for a fair bit. Uh, so maybe this is a good place to wrap everything up. So um, in the next exercise, I think we'll try to have things so that we can actually um, we can actually jump to different pages. For now, we just kind of have the, the GUI set up to allow us to. Uh, oh yeah, okay, so also conveniently, instead of pulling from the side, you actually can just tap the little drawer here and it'll pull the thing from the side as opposed to dragging it yourself. Um, handy, you know. Uh, okay, I think that's all for today. Thanks for watching the video. Um, this code is uh, going to be done in class, of course. Um, we'll see if I... Uh, managed to get the navigation stuff, but I think I will probably, just because it's already taken me some time to go through all this content, uh, I think I will save that for the next class. Um, but there is some comments in here just to indicate that these are some places where it's not a bad idea to uh, start trying to figure out how you might want to set up a new page, uh, which turns out actually isn't that hard, but we'll see about that next class. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in class.